Hello, hello, hello. Okay, can you hear me now? Good. <sighs> Silly Jonathan Little. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little. Today we're gonna be discussing how to play your draws. It's vitally important that you know how to play all the common spots that you will inevitably encounter at the poker table. And well, draws take place all the time. If y'all can hear me, please let me know. I think we're having technical issues, maybe we are, maybe we aren't. We will figure it out. That's what we do, we get the job done. So, if you're watching this in the future, if you didn't tune out because I, uh, because you couldn't hear me for the first 10 seconds, you might want to pause the video and go take the quiz right now. You can take this quiz at, hmm, where can you take this quiz? Pokercoaching.com slash draws quiz. Does that sound right? Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. Pokercoaching.com slash draws quiz. D-R-A-W-S-Q-U-I-Z. Okay. You can go to pokercoaching.com slash draws quiz and take the quiz ahead of time. Before we get started, I guess I might as well say hello to everyone. If you want to go ahead and go through it, give it a whirl. It's bright and early. Whew. Had a long night last night. Went to see the New York Rangers play. That was a nice, fun, long game. They got the job done. It's always good when you get the job done. It's important to show up, do good work, have a good goalie, and um, protect yourself before you wreck yourself. All right, let's get to it. I want to make it very clear, by the way, I um, have not taken this quiz in a very, very long time. So there's a chance I actually get some wrong. Maybe we'll get some wrong on purpose to see what the quiz says. All right. Are you ready to test your poker skills? Let's see how you do. You all play along with me. With 50 big blinds effective, under the gun plus two raises to 2.5 big blinds. You call a seven six of spades in the big blind. The board comes nine five five. You check opponent bets the third pot. What should you do? Nine five five. 50 big blinds deep. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. We have a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. Is that a draw or is that just junk? What do you think? I want to welcome all of you who are slowly coming in this morning. I know it's early. We're all hung over from the game. You know how it is. Good morning from Egypt. Hello. Hello, everyone. Mel. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I presume we're either going to call or raise. If we do call... We may be looking to raise turn. I think if we were shallower, we should be pretty inclined to raise. I think as we get deeper, we have to be a little bit more cautious with this exact hand because gut shot plus backdoor draw is actually pretty good. I'm going to say raise small. So opponent bet third pot would probably be like 3x whatever they made. So they, they probably, so look, if the pot's something like uh, six big blinds, they bet two, I'd go to five. Just a small little raise and put them in a pretty nasty spot. Good morning from India. Hello, hello. It's not going to tell me if I got it right or wrong. All right, fine. Maybe we'll see at the end. You're playing a 1-2 cash game. Very deep stacked. Low jack raises to $10. Cut off calls. Button calls. You're in the big blind with ace-seven of hearts. We call. Flop comes. Jack, nine, five. Two hearts. You check. Low jack bets 20. Cut off calls. Button calls. What should you do with the nut flush draw? Don't fold, I can tell you that. I forgot to refill my water before I got started. Bad beat. Um, What do you think about the nut flush draw here? Take a second, think about it. Seems like... So look, I think if we were shallower, we should probably be more inclined to just call. As we get deeper, though, presuming we're not going to get check raise or re-raised all that often, I mean, raising can't be that bad. But I think you probably just want to call here, call and try to spike. Very multi-way. You really don't want to raise because if we do raise and get re-raised, it is so bad. Like so, so bad, right? Whereas if we call, spike a heart, we're great. We don't spike a heart, whatever. Um, yeah, I would call this one. I think you probably want to raise more with just combo draws that can get in, like 10-8 of hearts, queen-10 of hearts, king-10 of hearts, stuff like that. Raise to prevent a four-handed turn, but you want a four-handed turn. Whenever you have a hand that can make the nuts, you want as many people in the pot as possible. Whenever you raise, now it's going to be way, way, way less likely that you get paid off whenever you hit, right? Agopin says, PokerCoaching.com works. I know it does. Uh, you won your second tournament in less than a week yesterday. Good job, good work. Yeah, I think this is just a call. Seems like a pretty reasonable spot to call to me. I would call. All right, let's see. 18 big blinds effective. Button min raises. You call in the big blind with 7-6 of hearts. Flop comes. 5-4 jack. Jack 5-4. Uh, we have a flush draw. You check button bets three big blinds. What should we do? Fold, call, or shove? 
with seven high straight flush draw. Mm hmm. Interesting spot because the opponent bet's so big. Three big blinds into a six big blind pot. If they bet smaller, you may actually want to min raise this. And also min raise with some really junky draws that can fold to a shove, like queen, ten of diamonds, stuff like that. If you don't if you have it pre flop, you may shove it pre flop to be fair. But I think here, given these options, shove is or shove all in, go all in is the only way of playing this one. You don't really want to call, because if you call and the turn's a blank and you check and your opponent shoves, then you probably have to fold, and that would be really bad. So I would just shove this one. I, I think, though, this is certainly a spot where if the opponent bets smaller, like one one big blind or one and a half big blinds, as they maybe should, then we should in turn put in some min raises with uh, the like good hands, like probably a five or better for value and just not fold. And then also raise with our high equity draws, like straight flush draw, and also raise with some junky draws, like... 6-2 suited, 6-2 of clubs, right? You can check min raise 6-2 of clubs. If they fold, great. And if they uh, call, you know, we can get after it every once in a while. And um, maybe we keep bluffing sometimes. So anyway, that's how I approach this spot. When they bet big, though, I think shove's the only option. Good morning from Australia. You just subscribed to Poker Coaching Premium. You feel like you know a lot more than 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, I, and I'm glad to hear it. Glad to hear that you're you're catching up. We're playing one, two, five hundred dollars effective. You raise from the low jack with nine, eight of spades and the big blind calls. Flop comes, ace, king, two. Big blind checks to you. What should you do? Check or bet? Good morning from the UK. Worldwide audience this morning. I realize it's not good morning for all of you. It's good morning for me. People in Australia probably about to go to sleep. People in, in the UK, middle of the day. I mean, this is just an easy bet, right? With a flush draw, I think you just have to bet here. I don't really see why you would not want to bet the nine high flush draw. I'd be betting here really frequently, to be fair. You raise low jack and big blind calls. I'm going to be betting very, 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 very frequently in this spot. So we're going to bet, clearly. All right. With 100 big blinds effective, you get dealt nine, eight of hearts in the big blind. The low jack raises to three big blinds. The cutoff and button call. And... You call the big one. So low jack raises, cutoff calls, button calls, you call. Fine. Flop comes, jack, 10, 2. You have a bad open into straight draw. You check, low jack bets, 8.5, cutoff calls, button raises to 32. Oh, boy. Would you ever not bet with a flush draw on the ace-king-9 flop? No, you basically always want to bet that board. And I might bet my entire range on that board, really. <laughs> Maybe not the most GTO play, but on Ace-King-9, that's the spot where you're... Or Ace-King-X, you can get a lot of folds on Ace-King-X. All right, we have an open-ended straight draw facing a bet, a call, and a raise. This is the spot where we rip it in and try to apply max pressure and get them all to fold. Calling is out of the question. You don't want to call here, because if you call and somebody yet to act shoves, it's like a, it's a pretty bad spot. So I think our only options are fold or raise. Now you may say, didn't you just say you wanted to keep a lot of people in whenever you have a draw? Y yes, I know. It depends on how high equity your draw is. Notice here our draw is actually not to the nuts. And also, uh, if we can make them all fold here, it's fantastic. And we actually do have some chance of making them fold, right? So in this spot, if they do have... Like imagine the guy who raises has queen jack. He's probably just going to fold. So this is a spot where as the raiser's range gets wider and wider... You should be more inclined to shove. But the default play is here, here is definitely to fold. Because in this scenario, whenever you're facing a bet, which should already be pretty strong, and a call, which should be reasonable, and then a raise to 32, you're going to be against a very, 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 very strong hand. Too much money for 34%. See, this is the problem here, is that you don't know you're going to get called every time. You're not just calling off your money. You're shoving, right? If you put in 100, and the person who made it 32 does not have what, ace-jack or better, they're probably going to fold, right? Now, they should have a whole lot of good hands here, either good made hands or good high-equity draws, but a lot of people will not. I mean, I've played in plenty of, like, one, two, no limit games where people just raise ace-10 on the flop because they think it's good or they want to find out where they stand. And if they're going to be raising stuff like ace-10 and jack-9 and queen-jack and folding it to a shove, well, then shoving's fantastic because then you're just printing equity. So you always want to make sure you're aware of your opponent's strategy. Against anyone good, though, this is just a fold. 
because the Ripflop Razor's range should be very, very good. When it comes to betting draw, says official Poker Coaching Study Group, you think you need to think about dominated effect. Use hands that fold slightly better hands. For example, betting king six suited instead of king queen suited because we get better kings to fold. Yeah, you always want to make better hands fold. You always want to ask, what am I trying to accomplish with this play? And like right here with the nine eight, if you can make king queen fold by shoving, that's fantastic. If you can make a jack fold by shoving, that's fantastic. The problem is, is they shouldn't. <laughs> So again, you have to realize in this spot, we're not calling to try to hit. And we're not shoving to try to hit. I mean, it's nice when you do hit, but we are shoving so that we have fold equity. Your problem with draws is in position with eight outs versus a preflop razor when they bet and you suspect they'll bet again on the turn. Call! Don't fold. Don't fold eight out draws, that's for sure. If it was too hard to be more likely to shove. If we have a straight flush draw, obviously don't fold. You should probably shove. That should be very clear. Whenever you have a load of outs to where when you get called, you're still 40, 45, 50% to win, never fold. Here when we get called, we're actually in pretty bad shape because we could just be super duper dominated by whatever, queen nine of clubs or something, right? So you have to realize that the logic of I want to try to call and hit does not make sense. The logic of, oh, if I had a lot more equity, I would shove. Well, clearly, right? If you, have a, if you had a set of jacks, you'd obviously put your money in, right? But that's not what we have here. You don't get to pick your cards. And also, you want to make sure you don't sit here and blind out. Anyway, this is a fold in most standard spots. What draws would we shove, though? Straight flush draw, I'd shove for sure. Any straight flush draw. Um, even, like, the bad one, like 8-7. I'd probably shove 8-7 to clubs. It's aggressive. That'd be the, probably the bottom of my shoving range. Would we shove king-queen? Uh, king-queen's an annoying one. King-queen's an annoying one because you will be dominated by some nut flush draws. But think about to that spot, I just had the nut flush draw, right? Where I said I wouldn't have raised. Uh, I don't think nut flush draw should actually raise here. So if nut flush draw doesn't raise for the opponent, and if I rip it in, nut flush draw may fold from the people who made it eight big blinds because they're just not going to call off 92 or whatever with ace high flush draw only. Uh, I think king queen may actually want to rip it in here because king queen dominates a lot of the opponent's draws. The opponent's draws are going to be king queen, which we block pretty hard, and it's chopping anyway. Queen nine, which we're crushing. And 9-8, which we're crushing, right? Also, if they do have a flush draw, it's usually not going to be the ace high. Therefore, it will be some sort of combo draw. But again, we block that to death. And we also are ahead of 9-8, you 9-8 know, eight, eight of clubs, right? With king-queen. So this is a spot where if I think I'd, pr I'd probably rip it in with king-queen against players who I thought would raise wider than only the nuts and super good draws here. So again, if, as I think the opponent's raising more marginal made hands, like queen, jack, and will fold, or jack, nine, and will fold, then I'm going to be way more inclined to jam draws. What should be the right action if the button calls? If the button calls, and we have the nine, eight here, yuck. I mean, I guess call and try to get there. It's certainly an annoying spot, but getting really good odds. What can you do? Do we shove queen, nine of spades? I mean, look, queen, nine of spades for backdoor flush draw? No, I wouldn't shove backdoor flush draw. I would, I would just fold queen, nine here. Queen nine, no, no flush draw. Queen nine of clubs I would shove. Notice, two clubs on the board, one spade. I don't think backdoor flush draw is all that relevant in this spot. Backdoor flush draws are really good when they give you additional equity to barrel on the turn. Because they give you a little bit more equity when you get all in, but in small pots, the backdoor flush draw gives you more very, very clear, easy bluffs on the turn. What is the best way to play lower pocket pairs when you have 20 big blinds? Follow the brief flop GTO charts at pokercoaching.com. If you're not a Poker Coaching member, head over right now to pokercoaching.com slash WSOP prep. Download the charts or use the, use the charts in your phone. The, the charts are available in your phone. I will pull them up really quick just to give you an example. I, mean, I don't know. Let me do it right here. Let's see. I can click on tools. Let's see if I can pull this up and it'll function right. Let's see. Man, I'll be able to get it in the window so well. Scroll down here to GTO preflop tournament charts. Now, you never have to ask me ever, ever again what to do in these spots. I realize this is not sized well at all. Anyway, click on 20 big lines, position, I don't know, button, action. This is going to show you what you should do when it folds to you. You rip it all in, force threes and twos. You min raise all the other pairs, right? Easy. What about if somebody raises in front of you? Let's say versus a raise from, I don't know, the hijack. You're going to see you're going to shove a lot of the pairs, right? As you see. How do we know this? Because we studied a decent amount, right? I've studied a decent amount. I know what the charts look like. Um, notice though, twos, threes don't, don't play. Now, if the opponent's going to raise too wide and fold too often, you want to be shoving more, probably with even the smaller pairs. 
But as you see, all this is right here available for you if you are a Poker Coaching Premium member. You have no excuse to play poorly with 20 big blind stacks. Anytime a student comes to me for the first time and I review their hands and they show me hand histories where they are just messing up with short stacks, uh, it tells me they haven't studied at all. Simple as that. They are not using the tools I have made for them. I know that in a lot of tournaments that I play, you get down to 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 big blinds, and I want to make sure I don't screw up those common spots. If you screw up the common spots, you will not win, especially if you get to the medium and high stakes. You have problems when playing these hands from the low jack and high jack as you're not sure what you're supposed to do. Well, it's very easy. Click on uh, position. Position is low jack. When they open fold to you, you're not going to shove much of anything because you're in early position, right? How do we know this? Because we studied. Again, you see small pairs fold. If you want to raise wider, I don't hate raising the small pairs. Um, so there you go. I mean, that's what you do in the low jack. Simple as that. What do you do against a raise from early position? Probably a lot of uh, folding as well. As you see, lots of folds with the small pairs. Why? Because um, you don't really want to call because you're going to get jammed on a lot by someone yet to act. You also don't want to shove because you're going to get called by somebody yet to act. And the initial razor's range should be very, very strong. So right there. There you go. Question answered. You will never have a problem with this again. You may notice this calling range, 20 big blinds deep, includes a lot of aces and kings and queens. If you don't call aces and kings and queens, you therefore cannot call these weaker hands. It makes your range substantially weaker if you're missing aces, kings, and queens in your calling range. And uh, that's a problem. So you want to make sure you're playing good, strong, balanced poker against good opponents. All right. Mel says you love using the charts. Yeah, it certainly helps. Shoving withdrawals always makes you sick. Why? That's the most fun thing about poker. You open a middle position with ace nine to two point one blinds. Cut off three bet to seven point two. Dealer calls, folds to you. Easy fold. You have nothing. When you have nothing, like ace nine offsuit, fold. Ace nine offsuit is not a good hand. I can show you in a heads up chart. It's an easy fold. What'd you say? Uh, you don't even say your chip stacks. That's a problem. Obviously, you want to know your chip stack. Let's presume we're deep stacked. We raise low jack. Get three bets from the, I don't know, where'd you say from? Cut off. 80 big blinds deep. Ace nine. Easy fold. Easy fold. Ace ten's an easy fold. Ace jack's an easy fold. King queen's an easy fold. King jack's an easy fold. Fold, 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 fold. When you have nothing, you fold. Especially if the opponent's range should be very, 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 very strong. <sighs> you gotta love somebody coming here and asking me if I want to buy 40% of them in the World Series of Poker at a markup. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. If you're a deck of degeneracy holder, by the way, that's my NFT series, I have bought, uh, I think, 50% of three people's actions so far for the World Series of Poker that I'm giving away to fans. I'm giving away 51% of myself to uh, deck of degeneracy holders. Check out deckofdegeneracy.com if you have any interest in getting pieces of my action in lots and lots of tournaments. All right. With 100 big lines. Oh, so this one's the, uh, we have the 9-8. We're going to fold this. This is a very easy fold. All right, part one of three. Oh, boy. With 100 big lines effective, you get dealt jack 10 in the cutoff and raise. Jack 10 suited. The big line calls. Flop comes 9-5-2. What should you do? Check or bet? Um, I mean, I would just bet. If we bet, we can even call a raise very deep stacked with backdoor flush draw and two overcards. This is a, a draw to backdoor draws plus overcards. This is actually a pretty good draw. So I, I would definitely be very, very happy betting here. You have no job this summer. You're going to be a senior in college. You want to sell your Robinhood account to fund poker. Maybe only sell half of your Robinhood account. I would recommend that you keep a big bankroll. Don't degen too hard unless you just don't care about the money. All right, after you bet the flop, good play. From the cutoff on 9-5-2, the big barn calls. Turns a king. We have a gut shot and a flush draw and an overcard to the nine and the big blind checks. What should we do? Your friend Galen said he made more than $1,500 profit with Deck of Degeneracy. Yeah, I told anybody who would listen to get into it. One of my good friends bought a hundred of them, I think, initially. And he has already uh, quadrupled his money. You can do the math. $250 times a hundred, $25,000. He's doubled it, or quadrupled it to $100,000. Look, you all know me. I show up, I do the work, I deliver value. That's all I do. All I do is deliver value. Some of you are saying not bet the flop. I mean, you just gotta bet the flop, everybody. You gotta bet the flop in that scenario. You can bet and call a raise. With backdoor flush draw and overcards, you have an easy, 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 easy continue. All right, 
terms of king, this is a great card for us. The opponent should have almost no king highs, and we have a lot of king highs, like king queen, king jack, king ten that would bet the flop, right? So this is just an easy bet on the turn. You probably even want to bet big, as Rashid says here. I like a big bet. You can apply a lot of pressure when your opponent has a nine or a five or a two. Essentially, anytime you can put a lot of your opponent's range in a really, really bad spot, you usually want to go for a bet. And whenever an overcard comes, especially if it's unlikely to hit them, and, and you have a lot of those in your range, like king eight suited, right? I bet the flop with king eight suited. We just drill the top pair. That's a hand that's almost always good, but very vulnerable. So you usually want to keep betting it. Uh, let's see. We came in second out of 121 people. And an $1,100 buy-in for $22,000. Good job, Craig. Nice work. You were betting your draws and turned plenty of them. <laughs> yeah. Whenever you take second place, you probably made some hands. Good job. Good work. Definitely bet here. And I would go pretty big. After you bet on the turn... From the cutoff, on 9-5-2, king, with a flush draw. The river is the ace. Pots now 35 big blinds. You have 83 big blinds behind. What should you do? What should you do? Interesting spot. I mean, the answer is obviously bet, but the question is how big do we bet? Interesting spot, because we're trying to get the opponent off of a 9, right? 9 or a 5. I think either we want to be betting, like... So look, in this spot, we only have a few options. We have, we have three options. We can bet, in my mind, we have three options. We can either bet, like, half pot, we can uh, bet pot, roughly, or we can rip it all in for a huge amount. Um, I wish I had fewer chips. Like, 60 big blinds, I'm definitely just shoving. We have a lot of nuts, and not, not actually all that many draws. So... So, so look, Mark's saying, is it too much to shove all in? It's never too much to shove all in. From a GTO point of view, you should have shoves in like virtually every spot where you're, where you're polarized, right? The, the question is, how do we go about balancing it in this spot? And I think this is probably a spot we want to bet like half pot, I think. I think. A lot of people saying a jam looks too suspicious. This is not how GTO thinks. GTO is not concerned with suspicion and how it looks to the opponent. Because what GTO does is it matches... A value bet with some portion of bluffs for all bet sizes, right? I mean, the way a real GTO solver would work here, if you gave it all the bet sizes, it would, is it would use all the bet sizes, right? And for simplicity, you're going to find that if you want to simplify that GTO strategy using all the bet sizes, in position in spots like this, you usually bet something like half pot, pot, and shove, three bet sizes. Your shove size is your very, very good hands, um, you know, sets two pairs, stuff like that. Probably just sets, really. Pot size would be more like two pairs. Smaller bet size would be mostly like top pairs plus a few nuts with nuts in, in all the bet sizes. Then you have to figure out how to go about adding in um, bluffs, right? And so what hands actually want to bluff in this spot? Like if, say, we did have, I don't mean, know, the problem is we don't have a lot of twos, right? So what are our, our draws? We have queen jack, queen 10, jack 10, very obviously. We have eight, seven, eight, six suited, Seven, six suited, all those suited. Not a lot of draws, really. It's an interesting spot. Definitely an interesting spot. Are you representing a straight? We're definitely not representing the four, three straight. We don't have very many four, three straights. We are representing, because we would play it this way, whatever hand we just want to slot into those bet sizes, like I literally just said. Small bet size, half pot's going to be mostly one pair hands, like a king and better, probably. King, king or ace. Uh, oh, uh, pot size best can be something like maybe ace jack or better good top pairs and better and then um big bet's going to be probably something like ace nine and better something like that okay and then we just have to slot in bluffs in all those ranges the question is where does this bluff slot in that's the hard thing to know um i think you probably want to go medium or pot size with this one if i had to guess your your big bluffs probably really want to have a three or a four in them if i had to guess i realize i don't have a whole lot of hands with a three or a four in them though so we had like six three suited one time um, because I mean, we are in the cutoff. Maybe we splash around every once in a while with something like that. You really want to, but because a lot of our threes are going to be like king three, which doesn't need to bluff now, right? So maybe we have queen three suited. If, if you don't have any of those king three and queen four suited, though, then it's starting to come really hard to find any hand with a four or a three. You want to have a four or three because that blocks the opponent's auto calls with straight draws that got there, right? <sighs> you probably don't want to have 
what do you not want to have in your hand when you go big? You always want to ask, like, you want to ask yourself these questions. What do you not want to have in my hand to go various bet sizes? So we definitely want to have a three or a four to go big. That seems very clear to me. And I don't have that. So, you know, that's good. That's a good reason to not go big. Um, I want the opponent to have, what do I want them to have? I want them to have a nine, right? Or I want them to have a five. What cards block those? So six, five is a hand that makes a lot of sense. Five, four is a hand that makes a lot of sense. 10, 9, and 9, 8 are hands that makes a lot of sense. So I don't think I really want to have those cards to go medium or big, I suppose. But I guess it doesn't really matter. We have to find some hands, right? So I don't know. This seems like a half pot or a pot size bet to me. I think either one's fine. You should probably just mix it up. I'm sure GTO prefers one over the other. Anyway, we bet. All right. With 40 big blinds effective in a tournament. Low jack open, so two big blinds. You three bet. In the cutoff to six big blinds with queen nine of spades. Low jack calls. You ever three bet the queen nine of spades? 40 big blinds deep? Let's see if we're supposed to do that. 40 big blinds deep. Low jack opens. We three bet the cutoff. I don't know about this one. Uh, we're in the cutoff versus raise from low jack. Does queen nine of spades three bet? Sometimes, right? Oh, a lot. All right. I thought I thought we may be a little bit tighter than this. I thought we might call a little bit more. I'm not, I don't know the charts all the time myself, you know? I do. we're playing it. The question is, is it good enough to call? I thought we'd be three betting a little bit more polarized, but... Probably not because I guess low jack raise, right? Low jack's a pretty tight spot. Anyway, we three bet. Fine, fine and good. Board comes. 10, 9, 2. What do we do? Ugh. <laughs> you know, I don't actually know if we should bet this one. You really don't want to bet this and get raised. Anytime you have a draw, you want to ask, if I bet and get raised, is it really, 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 really bad? And it might actually be really, really bad here because we have a gut shot, backdoor flush draw, and an overcard. You really don't want to bet and get raised here. I think this might actually be a check back. Ugh. I don't know about this one. I don't know about this one. I'm going to say check. Ah, oh, they like a bet. All right, let's do what all of you are saying here. You're all going nuts. Um, if he calls a turn to early a fold equity with a small bet on the previous hand where the, river, the turn was the king and the river's an ace. Yes, also small is half pot. Is Queen Nine suited a fold preflop? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. That's the 80 big blind chart. Ah! Good catch. 40 big blind chart. Ah, oh, I knew I was right. I knew it was a call mostly. I'm so good. It's like the GG emoticon. I'm so good. Good catch. It's definitely not a fold though. Queen Nine suited is a good hand. I don't know if you all know this. King Nine, King nine suited, King Eight suited, Queen Nine suited, Jack Nine suited. These are good hands. You do not go around folding those hands. Uh, let's see. Does a small bet look less bluffy? Again, everyone's concerned with the way the bets look. What is this? Oh, this is poker coaching homework. We're going to do that very soon. Um, you got to realize GTO does not care what a bet looks like. All it cares is if this is an adequate size to pair with a value hand, right? So I, I get that when you're playing against players who care about what it looks like, if you know what they think a bet looks like, then obviously just do that right like if you know your opponent thinks half pot means is a good hand that you're trying to get called with then obviously bet half pot with all your bluffs and big with all your value bets most people aren't that bad though some people are that bad but a lot of people are not going to be thinking that way they're just going to think i have this hand i'm getting good odds or i'm getting bad odds what should i do right typically people fold more often as they face a bigger bet because they're getting worse odds because they need to win more often some people you will find though uh, we'll call big bets with nothing and fold to medium bets because they think you're trying to get paid or whatever, right? Someone's trying to figure out how solvers work. We're not going to explain that today. Machine learning is not the same thing as a GTO solver. Those are very, very different things. One is a math equation. One is um, repetition. It's very different things. However, they come to roughly the same answer, so that's fun. All right. Uh, we bet the flop. Lojack calls, turns a king of spades, and they check. Oh, my God. This is another spot where uh, <laughs> you got to be careful of betting because if you bet and get raised, it's really, 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 really bad. Uh, also, I think as we get shallower and shallower here, you're going to get jammed more often, right? Like, I felt, I felt fine betting the... Uh, jack 10 of diamonds when we turn the king, right? Because in that spot, we're not going to get jammed very often. Here, though, if we bet... Say we bet 
10 big blinds and get jammed. <laughs> We're supposed to fold. And that's miserable. Right? So I don't know about this one. This one may be a check too. This one may be a check too. If you want to learn more about the solvers, check out the Poker Coaching Study Session on Discord. There you go. They will explain it all to you there. I think this is a check. You should jam it. Uh, probably not. Probably not supposed to jam it. I mean, jamming is going to be profitable. The question is, is it the best play? Cherishable girl says you're supposed to fold here. Uh, you're not supposed to fold. But it's, it's either bet or check. We cannot fold. If we do bet, we probably have to fold to a shove. A long time ago, a Swedish guy who was smashing the EPTs back in the day said, if you have a draw, just bet it big enough to where you can't fold it. <laughs> bet so big, you have to call it off. So pot it. Pot it so you got to call it off. He's broke now. What's the Discord link? Go to pokercoaching.com and go right down here to the community tab. Okay? Right down here. Pokercoaching.com. Log in. Go right to the community tab. Click on that. It'll take you right to the Discord. Uh, what happened to my thing? Um, I'm going to check. Enter your email address to get our results. Oh, boy. Let's see if they give me the results. We'll see if I can get it to do this. I'm entering my email over here. Oh, we got 9 out of 10. What do we get wrong? I guess we got that one about betting the turn, betting the flop wrong, right? Everything else we got right. View answers and explanation. Okay, let's see. All right, cool. This is a good quiz, huh? We'll go through them. With 50 big blinds effective, under the gun plus two raises, two and a half, you call the 762 in the big blind, flop comes 955. So here we have gut shot, backdoor flush draw, we check, they bet, easy raise. You should raise the draw. On this board, you have the nut advantage because we have a lot more fives. This allows us to raise at a really high frequency. I agree. You'll balance this with all of your nut hands raising often. Yeah, you'll raise like a nine, a five, all sorts of draws. Nice, easy one. I, I think this is a pretty pretty obvious spot, don't all of you? I think that's a pretty, pretty easy spot. Whenever you have gut shots on low paired boards, you want to be raising very, very frequently. Leo says, thanks for the three free days of poker coaching. Good, glad to hear it. Adamo would rip it. You want to rip, you want to be like Adamo. Yeah, I mean, sure, maybe. All right. Playing one, two, low jack raises, cut off calls, button calls, you call a seven of hearts, flop comes, jack, nine, four. A lot of you said you wanted to raise here. I said call. You should call on this spot. Here we have a, the nut flush draw. A lot of people think you're supposed to just raise the nut flush draw, but we got to realize, well, let's read, let's read what I say here. This draw benefits from multi-way action because it allows you to cooler, weaker flushes that would fold to a raise. Exactly. Also, if you get in 250 bite big blinds all in on this flop, it's very likely you're against one of the hands that you do poorly against, like a set. You gotta remember, we're playing very deep sacked, right? When you're playing very deep sacked, you can't just rip it in with draws, because when you do get action, you are gonna have 40%. A lot of people think, ooh, overcard, nut flush draw, get it in. But no, 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 not when you're playing deep stacked. Finally caught me live, but you see nobody in the chat. I think people are in the chat on Twitch. I know they are, because I see them typing. Shout out to everybody on Twitch, shout out to everybody on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook, wherever you're watching this. I think my program is broken, it only says three out of four working, who knows? All right. So anyway, this is a spot where I think a lot of people mess up by raising with the nut flush draw. But you have to realize, when you have the nut flush draw, you really, really, really want to keep the pot multi-way. A lot of people said you wanted to make the opponents fold or something. You wanted to get heads up. You don't want to get heads up because then you're really likely to not get paid. And if you're heads up, you're way more likely to get called if the turn and river breaks out, right? So you just want to call here and try to spike. It's okay to call and try to spike, especially when you have the best draw. And especially when you can easily can continue on an ace turn. You have no idea how it makes it happy. It makes you happy that I saw all of you. Only only chickens on Twitter. I don't know what that means. All right, eighteen wheel blinds effective. Button min raises. You call in the big blind with seven six of hearts. Flop comes jack five four. You check button bets three big blinds. What do we do? I say jam. Yeah, with short stacks you have plenty of value hands that don't mind jamming to deny equity like a jack or a five, right? To balance this with the hands, you need to jam with some draws that don't mind getting folds from over cards that have plenty of equity against the opponent's calling range. Yeah, pretty standard spot. I think this is an easy one. Most of you got this one right. When it comes to betting nut flush draws, you want to bet some and check some. Yeah, I mean, you got to make sure you're balanced across the board, right? 
playing one, two, super deep. You raise low jack with nine of spades, big blind calls, ace, king, two. They check to you. Should, we should be betting here every time, right, on ace, king, two. This is spot to just, just bet. People are going to fold too often. This board heavily favors your range. They'll rarely have aces, kings, ace, king, etc. And you have all these hands. And ace, queen, and ace, jack, and ace, ten, right? We have all of those. For this reason, you should do a lot of betting on this type of board. You should certainly include draws like nine, eight of spades. I agree. This is a pretty easy one, too. Most of you got this one. So, so far, the one that I think is the most difficult that we've proposed is this one with the nut flush draw multi-way. A lot of you got that one wrong in the chat. And you need to make sure in the scenario you realize it's okay to call and just see what develops, especially when you're playing really deep. Okay, let's see. Number five. Hello, coach. You want a ticket to the housewarming event? You're going to Vegas soon. What's a housewarming event? Well, good luck. I don't know. Have fun. All right. 100 blinds effective with 9-8 of hearts in the big blind. Low jack raises. Cutoff calls. Button calls. You call. Flop comes. Jack. 10-2. Oh, this is the one where I said jamming actually could be okay. If you think the raisers range is way, way, way too wide, containing hands that will fold to a shove. Now, I don't think that's everybody. But um, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, right? Let's see. You should fold. This draw has reverse implied odds. When called, has reverse implied odds. Yeah, you definitely don't want to call, right? Any jack comes, king, queen makes the nuts. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Your draw is too weak to continue and you should fold. So if I had to rewrite this today, I would have given a little bit of explanation about how you don't have a lot of fold equity when you raise. Just because the opponent made it 32 big blinds. Um, if they had made it... You know, if, if you think the guy's range is too wide, like I said, I think jamming becomes reasonable because then you have fold equity. Otherwise, it's just an easy fold. What is the low jack? That is a position at the poker table. The positions are starting with the big blind working backwards. Small blind. Well, big blind, small blind, button. You know what the button is. Big blind, small blind, button. Then the cutoff, that's to the right of the button. Then the hijack, that's to the right of the cutoff. Then the low jack, that's to the right of the hijack. So that would be under the gun, six-handed. It's important to always count backwards. Because under the gun is not a very good descriptive position because under the gun nine-handed is very different than under the gun five-handed. The house warming is a $500 poop show. They'll have about 20,000 players. Ooh, good luck. Have fun. That'd be a good one to win. MF says he loves deck of degeneracy. Good. Glad to hear it. I love deck of degeneracy as well. All right. 100 big blinds deep. Jack, 10 of diamonds in the cutoff. You raise three big blinds, big blind call, slop comes, nine, five, two. What should we do? Check or bet. Easy bet. You should bet with this hand. You have a good backdoor straight flush draw. Yeah, I mean, this is just an easy, easy bet. We can get king high to fold, queen high to fold, maybe even ace high to fold. If your opponent's nitty, we can get pocket threes to fold. And not just that, even if we get called, we can keep betting the turn and then get them to fold, right? So this is a beautiful hand to bet. Never, ever, ever check any jack 10 here, really. Just bet the flop with all your lower cards. Yeah, big blind, small blind, button, cutoff, hijack, low jack, under the gun plus two, under the gun plus one, and under the gun. Yeah, some people are also starting to call this under the gun one. No, under under the gun, uh, under the gun nine, under the gun eight. They do stuff like that as well. How do you know when to walk away when you're winning? Why would you want to leave when you're winning? If you're winning, it presumes you have an edge. You should be quitting quickly when you're losing, typically. You should not be quitting quickly when you're winning. All right. You bet the flop with jack, ten, and diamonds. Where am I? You bet the flop with jack, ten, and diamonds. Turns a king of diamonds. Beautiful card. Any over card, you're going to keep betting here. What should we do? We should bet. The turn is one of the best cards in the deck for you. It is the best card in the deck for you, actually. Your opponent folded out most of their king X, and you have plenty of value hands that want to bet, like a king, and you picked up loads of equity. Easy bet. Yeah, that's an easy one. Um, You bet the turn. River is a brick ace. Boss now 35 big blinds. Let's see if we have any bet sizes, bet sizing information here. This is a great spot to bet with your missed draw. Many of your opponent's hands have turned into weak one pair hands, like 9x, like I said. You have plenty of value hands and want to bet, so you need to find some missed draws to bluff, including this hand. Yeah, I, I wish I went into which size to bet here, and to be fair, it probably doesn't matter all that much as long as you don't shove this one. I think you are not supposed to shove this one, but I think half pot or pot is fine. Again, the hands you want to shove definitely need to have a 3 or a 4 in them. But not king three, right? So it's kind of a weird spot. If we don't have any threes or fours, I guess I guess this could become a shoving candidate. But I think we may have some. If we don't have any, then it's fine. I mean, let's just look at our cutoff range. What, are we 40 big lines deep? Is that what we started with? No, 100 big lines deep. 100 big lines deep. So we'll look at this cutoff raising range. I mean, we're not going to have very many, right? So notice we don't actually have a whole lot of threes here. And, and our only threes are ace three and king three, right? 
Ace 3 and King 3 suited, which we don't need to shove as a bluff. So anyway, I, I'm not going to lie. I'd be a little bit wider than this. I'd probably raise the 4-3 suited, maybe the 5-3 suited. So, I mean, those are just a few. You don't need a whole lot of bluffs in the spot to make it work. All right. Uh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Answer some chat questions real quick. Listen, I know a lot of people, they play until they lose all their money every time. You probably start playing poorly towards the end of your session. You probably, um, well, you probably start playing poorly for one reason or another. Maybe you get tired, maybe you get drunk, maybe you get uh, tilted. Who knows what? If you, if you play poorly, you will lose your money. The thing is, though, is that when you are winning, you typically win in games that are soft. When you're losing, you typically lose in games that are tough. So if anything, you should be quitting quickly. I mean, back when I used to play at Bellagio, every day I played 5 to no limit. If I lost $4,500, three buy-ins, I would quit pretty much every time. That did not happen very often, maybe like two days out of 30 or something. And when I was winning, I would never quit. I would always play roughly 12-hour sessions. I knew I started to get a little bit tired and antsy after about 12 hours of playing poker straight. And um, I would actually not play ideal hours. I would play noon until midnight because I needed to have a regular regular schedule. Um, probably ideal hours are more like 5 p.m. till 5 a.m. if I had to guess. But whatever. Um, I, I would quit after a set period of time. And I would probably stay late maybe two days out of 30 again, whenever the game is just super soft. Like, it's obviously a really good game. I would not quit the really good games. How do you learn to balance your ranges and still use a mixed strategy? Just look at a lot of solver outputs. Study a lot. Practice a lot. At PokerCoaching.com, we have many, 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 many examples, especially in the Tournament and Cash Game Masterclass. And a lot of the coaches basically study themselves. I mean, Matt Affleck is a good example of this. He does a webinar every week for Poker Coaching Premium members where he goes through exactly what he is studying to improve his skills. You do it over and over again, I mean, you'll, you'll start to see consistent patterns. Um, we also have a new poker coaching coach coming on very, very soon, literally, in the top 10 of the Global Poker Index right now, one of the absolute best tournament players in the world. I've seen a few of his videos that he has turned in so far, and they are excellent. I learned a few things in them, and I'm looking forward to those as well. Very, very solver, GTO-based as well. Um, also, check out the poker coaching study sessions. Again, you get in those just by clicking on the uh, community tab in the poker coaching website. Get in that. And, um, you know, Louis Philippe there, he is the master of teaching everybody how to crush the game. So make sure you, you make good use of that. Is it bad to drink a couple of beers while playing? Well, if you want to win, probably. You play various hold'em games at the same time, like No Limit and Pot Limit and Limit. It's probably not a good idea. Are these questions you're reading real? I mean, real. What is real? I mean, I suppose it's on the internet, so I guess it's not real. Maybe it's on the internet, so it is real. What happens when you miss your draw on the river? We literally just have an example of that right here. We have the jack high. What do we do in this spot? We're betting. How should you differentiate between the line that you take for your range versus your exact hand? I'm not sure this question makes sense. Your range is never going to do the same thing with every part of your range. Your range gets split up based on the type of hand you have, right? You're losing your ass nonstop. Well... Play better. Check out pokercoaching.com slash WSOP prep. We have a sale going on right now. Drinking beer is the same as injecting estrogen. Am I allowed to say that? I'll probably get banned for saying something like that. Please don't ban me. That was, I was just reading a comment. How do you deal with players playing 90% of their hands? Oh, wow. That's so easy. Just play good cards. If your opponents play really bad cards, just play good cards and you can't really lose. Easy game. All right, let's take a look at the question that I got wrong. This is the one I got wrong. With 40 big blinds effective in a tournament, low jack opens, you three bet in the cutoff with queen nine of spades. We already showed that this is actually maybe not the ideal play, but there is some, some portion of raising. Where are we in? I'm sorry. Low jack opens, we're in the cutoff. I said, we, I, thought, I thought we should call here naturally, just, you know, referencing the chart in my head. We pulled it up. Turns out you are supposed to mostly call. Queen 9 suited calls, 78%, 3 bets 22. I'm telling you all of you, I mean, don't tell my opponents, but I use a very implementable strategy here where I'm probably never 3 betting Queen 9 suited. I would just call every time. And I would probably 3 bet King 8 suited every time, maybe like Jack 9 suited or, or 10 8 suited every time. And then I would call all of these in this vicinity. I'd call these. Call these, 3 bet like this one. I, I'm just a little bit more polarized than GTO recommends in these spots for simplicity. So I, I know I know I would have called in that spot. Anyway, whatever, we 3 bet. Flop comes 10 8 2. What should we do? I said check. You should bet. You have a range advantage with over pairs and top set. Using queen 9 as one of your bluffs is best here. You should use a small size. Yeah, if you are going to bet, you definitely want to go small. 
Um, like whatever. I, I think I actually think checking here's fine. I it, it, this depends on how the Lojax range is actually structured. I mean, let's look at Lojax range. What it actually should be here. No, you know, should is definitely not what it may, actually is. But here you can look at Lojax versus three bat from cutoff. So take a look at the hands in green. This is what we really care about. The hands in red would have shoved. So does this opponent have a lot of tens and eights? This is what I always want to try to ask myself. Do they have a lot of tens and eights? They have a lot of a lot of suited tens, that's for sure. Um, do they have ace ten? If they have ace ten, we should be way more inclined to check, right? Do they have a lot of eights? Well, they have some eights, right? Not a lot, but we don't have any eights either. The other card what was it two doesn't really matter. They also have a lot of me me medium pairs, right? So even though we do have a nut advantage here, I'm not actually sure we have much of a range advantage. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. I don't know. I would just really fear getting shoved off this hand. Maybe that, maybe that's the thing is that maybe GTO does not care so much about getting shoved off this hand, but I wouldn't hate to get shoved off this hand. And I do think that this is a spot where a lot of people will put in a check raise because the pot is already so big in relation to the pot. Lojack shouldn't have many check raises on the top. I mean, give them a 10, a lot of people will check shove you, right? Which is why you want to make sure you bet really small so that you can actually call if they check raise you. If you pot it on the flop, because remember, pot's already 15 big blinds or something, 14 big blinds. If you bet 14 and they jam, that's miserable, right? So you want to make sure you're betting really, really small here when you do bet. Okay. So say we bet turn is the king of spades. We turn a straight flush draw. This is where I said we should check. Four king blinds, 34 behind. Same same problem I just explained on the flop, except for now we're even shallower. You should check. This may be the toughest question in the quiz. Besides maybe uh, this one right here. <laughs> Usually when you pick up equity, continue barreling is good. At this stack to pot ratio though, you want to make sure you realize the equity of this hand. Equity realization is vitally important. If you choose to bet and the low jack jams, you have to fold out a lot of equity. For that reason, you should check your draw as an imposition check and realizing your, you want to realize your equity. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I'm a good home game cash game player with decent players and not, wait, and not decent players who actively play in the casino. How do you elevate your game? Well, I, I mean, so this happens a lot to people, Brady. A lot of people crush their opponents in their local home game because, hate to break it to you, a lot of players at your local home game are really bad at poker. And it's not so hard to crush really bad players, but people who get up and go to the casino and are happy to pay rake and, you know, make, make, they do it on a regular basis, those players are generally just going to be better, usually a lot better than the players in your local games. When you go to Vegas, you know who's going to the World Series this year? All the people who crush their local games. All the people who crush their local games are going to Vegas, and they are pretty good. But they're going to get smashed by all the players who are actually very good at poker. They're, they like they can't even compete. So how do you get better? You say you watch some Masterclass videos. Masterclass is a very good introduction to the basics. Not to, not to degrade what they've done. They, do, they have a lot of good work there. Very, very high quality productions. But I would recommend you study a whole lot more is what it amounts to. Um, go to pokercoaching.com slash WSOP prep. Get in the tournament masterclass. How's there only 14 big blinds in the pot? Well, let's think about it. Okay. Maybe that's, maybe that's wrong. They open it two and make it six. Ooh, maybe, maybe that's true. You know what? Pot size is wrong. Good call, Martin. Good call, Martin. Pot size is wrong. Pot size is even bigger. If the pot size is bigger, more like, well, what should it, what should it be? Looks like whoever made this didn't add in the pot. Let me, let me get my little, little notepad here. Send myself a note. Quiz nine. Pot size wrong. If the pot starts to get really shallow, we want to go all in. If the pot is uh, roughly the same depth, which is probably going to be similar enough, we probably still want to check it back. But anyway, look, you got to study. You got to get better at poker is what it amounts to. And if you've studied a somewhat basic video designed to help the mass market learn something, uh, that's not going to be as good as studying something that's designed to help people who are really trying to win a ton of money from poker get better. Sometimes you get crap from people in your home game. Who cares, Mark? You win much more with your big hands and some of them don't like it. So? So? Who cares if your opponents don't like it that you beat them? <laughs> you know, come on, man. Anyway, this is, I think this is a check, assuming this stack to pot ratio. And even if we have like 12, 25 big blinds in the pot, I'd still probably check it back. You really, 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 really do not want to bet and then have to fold this hand. So anyway, 
And you get a free membership to Poker Coaching if you click this button. This is a pokercoaching.com slash draws quiz if you want to go back and take this yourself. We have lots and lots of World Series of po Poker preparation stuff happening right now, to be fair. Um, I realize a lot of you are not going to go to the World Series, but if you play poker tournaments at all, we just uploaded a whole lot of new content. You'll see it if you go to pokercoaching.com slash WSOP quiz. What's wrong with the pot size? They open to two, we three bet to six, they call. Six times two is 12, plus small blind, big blind, and ante. That makes it 14. Flop comes. You bet the flop for a third pot, which is four big blinds, and they call. So if the pot was 14, and we bet, we bet four, and they call, 14 plus eight is 22, right? All right, that's the way for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're a Poker Coaching member, by the way, uh, we, we have a homework webinar starting very, 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 very soon. Let me see. I have it pulled up here. I don't know if it's going to look quite right on your screen. In a tournament against a competent opponent, 40 big blinds deep, it folds to you in the low jack. What is your strategy? Raise with these hands. That's an easy one. All right, suppose you raise. Only a big blind calls. So comes jack 10-4 with a flush draw. What do we do? Suppose we bet one and a half big blinds and they raise us. We get check raised. What's our strategy? So as we call, turn brings an ace of diamonds. Ugh. They check. What's our strategy? Hmm. <laughs> Tricky one. Suppose we check. Rivers of five, and they bet four and a half big blinds. What is our strategy? Ooh, going to spoil it. By the river, we're going to be looking at something like this. Not actually a lot of jams, but probably more jams than you think, because we do have some flushes, right? So we've got to find some bluffs. What hands are good bluffs on this board when there are three clubs on the board? You may be surprised to see. Your bluffs are going to come from hands with a club, like nines, eights, sevens, sixes. These are bluff all ends on this river, by the way. And then a few of these hands, um, king 10 with a club, uh, queen jack with a club. Pretty cool spot, right? You want to make sure you are finding the adequate bluffs. It's vitally important that you find bluffs, assuming you play well. Can I say that link again? The link's down there. Look, way down there at the bottom. Pokercoaching.com slash W-S-O-P, P-R-E-P. The draws quiz is at pokercoaching.com slash draws quiz. D-R-A-W-S-Q-U-I-Z. All right. I have to get to this homework webinar. If you're a poker coaching member, it'll be right in the dashboard. Let me see if I can pull it up. I'll show you how to get there. Go to the pokercoaching.com slash dashboard. Click right there. And it is right here. Homework webinar with Jonathan Little starts at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Literally in six minutes. I should probably get ready. Have a good day. Enjoy yourselves. Make the most of your week. Thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this, click the like and subscribe buttons down below. Click the notification bell. Click all the buttons. I'd appreciate it. If, if you all click this, these buttons, it lets me know that you like it. That's a way to give me feedback. If you appreciate me, give me a little bit of feedback, please. I'll talk to you all later. If you're in the homework webinar, I'll see you in uh, six minutes.